Uh, this one's for you, Dr. Rania, so you can have the mic. Uh, you mentioned blended families. Do stepchildren become mahram? Uh, do you need to wear a veil around stepchildren or adopt the children? Do husbands, siblings, parents, and children become your mahram? That was all the fifth questions. Mashallah. Well, kind of, I'm going to take the approach that Ustada Maryam took and say that there actually are some differing opinions related to the nuance questions, because these are multiple. I don't even think I caught them all right there, but all the different questions. I think I want to go back to the more important piece of this and then tell you references and resources where you can learn more about the specific case. The reason for that is it has a lot to do with the ages of when these children come into the family. It has to do with whether they were nursed or not. There's so many different pieces to this particular uh, question. And so it's probably not going to make a whole lot of sense to do a whole fiqh lesson right at this very moment. But the broader question that I think is maybe fueling perhaps some of this is the concept of blended families. And I was talking about the household of the Prophet Sallallahu and how there were multiple, multiple different people in that household. Particularly, I mean, the one where he, after he's married with the Sitna Khadija, radiallahu anha, and of course there's her children. There are, uh, at the time, like we said, adopted son, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified that adoption is different than biological children, so Zayd bin Haritha. There is Sitna Baraka that we talked about today. There's also, and then her children <laughs> that come into the picture, right? And then there is, of course, uh, Sayyidina Ali, so his own cousin, right, who is brought into the household as well, and then his own children. So what I meant by the blended family is that you have so many different, today this is what we call this term, we call it a blended family in which you have different people from different families that are all or different, uh, you know, that are not necessarily all related to each other who are living in one household. And I think the bigger part of the question here is how do you keep that kind of peaceful atmosphere with so many different types of people when sometimes, subhanAllah, even with biological people all related to you, it's hard to keep any peace at all, <laughs> subhanAllah. And I think what I'll end on since that, you know, I said the earlier part of references is really has to do with learning the fiqh of the rules, right, the, the actual rules, related to the nuance of your particular family, if you are in a blended family or hope to one day be, you're considering that for yourself, is to definitely seek out your teacher, you know, the fiqh teacher of your community, the, the person who can answer those nuanced questions for you as one important place. Secondly, to learn for yourself too, because this comes down to our own fardai knowledge about, you know, um, it really comes down to understanding lineage and understanding who's related to who and who is a mahram to who, which is really important because then it comes into the rules of do you cover in front of the person, do you not? Is this person considered like your brother, sister or not? Can I marry them? Can my children marry these people? And so on and so forth. So it's actually pretty important rules here. And they're all taught in the science of fiqh or Islamic law. So I hope, inshallah, you'll, if it's inspired you to take some of these classes, they are offered. As we were saying, find the opening, inshallah, and the place to, to learn them uh, for yourself. So seek out a teacher who can answer the question for your nuance. Learn for yourself and take some of the questions, some of the fifth classes yourself, inshallah, if you haven't already. And thirdly, if you are in a blended family or a part of it or have those extended to you that are part of that, do seek out the kind of support and help. And this is my plug, I'll put the plug in again, of kind of getting that therapy and support and help when needed because this is not an easy situation. We said the Prophet's household, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was the most peaceful and happy household of the entire region. They had the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, <laughs> right? The one who, the perfect of all creation, who taught us how to be uh, have the kind of adab and with the kind of wisdom and treatment of each other that today you would call interpersonal relations. If we can learn that prophetic model from the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, all of us would do better. And until that's the case, we all need some help, mashallah. And if you are not able to figure this out on your own, this is where the Quran tells us, ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. That could come in the form of our teachers, our counselors, but potentially also those who've professionally studied marriage and family counseling. That can be in the form of professional therapists who are Muslim, hopefully drawing from the sunnah as well.